Hi, it's Gene Retired in Mexico, and we ask one question on this channel if you're new, which is, do they write them and sing them like they used to? Now, a lot of people, young and old, they, they think the old music is better, but I am not so sure. And today, as part of this, to establish this, we're going to kick off 30 favorite albums of 2007. So these are my personal favorites. I'm not saying they're the best. So let's get right into it. Uh, I've got four honorable mentions. So my first honorable, honorable mention, if I can say that, is uh, St. Vincent, Marry Me, which is her debut album. Uh, it's fine. I enjoy it. Um, three, three and a half stars, something in that territory. Uh, but I think she would get better. Um, later, there are songs like Severed Cross Fingers that are just personal favorites of mine. So I've played this album a few times and I like it, but it missed the cut. Number 33, one of my five favorite singers, I would say, Mavis Staples. Uh, this is a gospel album produced by Ry Cooter. It's called We'll Never Turn Back. And it's a very good album. I, I like it. I've played it many times. Um, it got knocked a little bit for its lyrics, and I would agree with that. Uh, with, with that assessment um there's a song called i'll be rested where she has a litany of people that are going to heaven and that's a little presumptuous for me i i would not presume to say who's going to heaven or not going to heaven or if there even is a heaven so i don't know i love mavis staples and the uh, sound of this record is great but uh yeah just missed the cut number 32 an album that some people don't like uh but i do it's paul mccartney's memory almost full and I, I like this album um i think the reason it didn't make my list is not every single track is a winner there's two or three average tracks on it but overall sir paul could have done a lot worse and uh, this is an enjoyable album and coming at number 31, just missing uh, a band that I like a lot, and this may be my favorite album by them, The Ravenettes, Lust, Lust, Lust. And uh, I'm, I'm going to use a word on here, but my notes on here are that it's gorgeously fucked up. That's the best way I can describe it. Uh, pretty and also aggressive. If you don't know the Ravenettes, really good. I recommend this album. All right, so let's get into the uh, 30 through 21. Uh, number 30 is um, an old guy. You know, he's, um, how old is he now? Late 70s or early 80s? But this is uh, Ian Hunter from Mott the Hoople and an album called Shrunken Heads. And man, there's great playing on this album. It's got a couple great bass players on it, Graham Maybe and Tony Shanahan. You say, well, who are they? Well, Graham Maybe was Joe Jackson's um, bass player, and he's one of the best bass players around. Uh, love his music. And then Tony Shanahan uh, is from the Patti Smith group. So unusual band. Um, he wrote or co-wrote all the tracks, and some of them are funny, like I, I am... What I Hated When I Was Young, and other ones that are just gorgeous, like, uh, I, you know, I liked it better when the world was round. And there's a lot of nostalgia on this um, album, uh, but it's very good. Um, I recommend it highly. It's a three and a half star album. And yeah, Ian Hunter, Shrunken Heads. His discography is real hit and miss, uh, but this one's a winner. And I uh, actually own this album. I didn't uh, pull it out to show you, but I actually have this on uh, CD. Coming in number 29, a soundtrack, uh, which I also own. Yeah, I should have pulled these out so I could show you. Sorry about that. But um, this is uh, I'm Not There, uh, the Bob Dylan biopic with... Um, uh, you know, let me go ahead and pull this up because there's so much to talk about with this. Uh, but this is two discs. And 
there's great stuff on here. So my favorite um, songs on here are, um, I like um, Pressing On by John Doe from X. That's one of Bob Dylan's gospel songs, but he does a, a fantastic version of it. Um, let's see here. My absolute favorite song, believe it or not, is probably Senior Tales of Yankee Power by Willie Nelson and Calexico. Calexico is a band from Tucson, Arizona, and boy, they knocked this out of the park. I, I like this better than Bob Dylan's original. Um, you have an interesting version of Ring Them Bells by Sufjan Stevens. Uh, Charlotte Gainsbourg does Just Like a Woman. Uh, I Want to Be Your Lover, Yola Tango. Can You Please Crawl Out Your Window, The Hold Steady. The Wicked Messenger by The Black Keys. Cold Irons Bound by Tom Verlaine. And, um... Let's see here. We've got John Doe does another track on here and a pretty interesting reading of Knocking on Heaven's Door by Antony and the Johnsons. Um, there's sort of a house band on here with, uh, with, uh, with Stephen Malcolmus and the Million Dollar Bashers. And, and they're okay. You know, they're not my favorite songs. So, for example, the album kicks off with All Along the Watchtower by Eddie Vedder and the Million Dollar Bashers. It's okay. You know, um, I'm, I like Pearl Jam quite a bit, but yeah, it's okay. But anyway, so the CD's hit and miss. If you haven't seen the movie, it's just real interesting, very interesting. So anyway, that's number 29, I'm Not There. And uh, number 28, I also own, uh, which is uh, Herbie Hancock. So we have a jazz album on here it's river the joni letters and you know this this won a grammy not for jazz album of the year but best album of the year which is kind of controversial because it beat out some really good uh albums but um yeah he yeah best album at the grammys and uh the grammys got it close to right on this one and uh, this one's also a little hit and miss. I give it three and a half stars. Uh, when it's good, it's really good. Tina Turner, who, you know, hasn't necessarily done the best music later in her career. She turns in a winner with Edith and the Kingpin. This is um, a, a little bit more... Um, Sometimes she oversings a little bit on this one. Man, she just nails it. She's got exactly the right emotion on this, and she doesn't overdo it. It's great. It rivals the Joni Mitchell version. Leonard Cohen does a brilliant reading of The Jungle Line, which is also from the same Joni Mitchell album called The Hissing of Summer Lawns. And then Wayne Shorter's on this album, and his saxophone's all over it. It's beautiful. Uh, if I have any knock on this album, it's two things. One is that some of the instrumentals are a little sleepy. I'd like it if they bopped a little more. Uh, you know, even a ballad, you can you can put a little bit of bop in it. And uh, and then, strangely, um, not every song is a Joni Mitchell song. So, for example, he does a version of Wayne Shorter's Nefertiti, which he famously recorded with the Miles Davis quintet. quintet and that's a great song. Um, I, but I don't know why he did that. It's not as good as the Miles Davis version, which Herbie Hancock was in the Miles Davis quintet, so he knows how to play it. He had uh, two-fifths of the original band on there. But, yeah, there's, um, and then there's like a, uh, I think a Duke Ellington song on on there. And um, I guess those are people that Joni Mitchell liked. So that's why he put them on there. But, uh, and then Joni herself is on there, and she does a pretty good job. So, yeah, The River, um, the Joni Letters, the title track is sung by Kareen Bailey Ray from England, and, and she does all right, but it, it's 
it doesn't top the Joni Mitchell version. All right, number 27 is the National Boxer. And man, this is an interesting album. So this grew on me when I took the time to read the lyrics because I I have a little hard, a little bit of a hard time understanding what he's singing. Uh, but the lyrics are, some of them are dysfunctional stories and some are functional stories. And then he likes to repeat verses. And the lyrics are really interesting on this album. And they're all sketches, which I love. So you get a little bit of the story, but he doesn't fill you in on the details. And so you have to uh, kind of direct your own movie in your head. And I like that a lot. I think um, if five of us were to listen to Boxer, we'd have five different takeaways from it. Uh, but it's really good, solid songwriting, singing, and production. Yeah, Boxer by National. Number 26, a band from San Francisco, the wonderfully weird Deerhoof. <laughs> and these guys are so interesting, so avant-garde. Uh, but when you listen to them repeatedly, the songs sink in and they get really catchy. Um, love it. It's an album called Friend Opportunity. And this might be my favorite uh, Deerhoof album. I haven't listened to all of them. My favorite track is Plus 81. Uh, wonderful song. So how do you describe? I just did a um, reaction to Deerhoof on KEXP, so you can check that out and uh, see what they're like really good musicians and they're just i don't know I, I don't even know how to describe them uh exactly you have a um asian singer and bass player and then uh, a bunch of guys playing the drums and guitars and keyboards and they're just very unique all right so coming in at number 25, one of the most melodic albums you'll ever hear, uh, at least in the 21st century, it's indie rock, but it's super melodic. A friend of mine here that watched my uh, video of it said he reminded, they reminded him of the Beach Boys, but this is James Mercer's The Shins. So The Shins, James Mercer, and this is a band that I saw in a uh, concert. Um, I've also seen Herbie Hancock in concert. I saw the shins when my stepson uh, said, hey, uh, I want to go to a show. And he was too young. He was, I don't know, 15 or something. He was too young to go to a concert by himself. And he didn't even drive. And so anyway, he said, would you take me to a show? I said, who? And he said, the shins. I said, okay, let's go. So we went and saw them, and they were, it was this tour. It was the uh, Wincing the Night Away tour. It's a great album. Um, yeah, and, you know, I, I look at this, I look at some of the ratings, all music, four stars, Pitchfork, 7.0. I'm not sure why this album didn't get a little bit better critical reviews, because I think it's a fan favorite. People really like this, and the Shins Wincing the Night Away. I did a video, Master Monday, on the song uh, Phantom Limb, which is so pretty. So James Mercer and company. By the way, as an encore, when I saw them, unbelievable. They came out and did the second side of Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it was incredible. I, it was nothing like the regular part of the show. I, I had no idea they had that kind of, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? That kind of uh, range. That's the word I'm looking for. And then after that tour, he fired the whole band. So I don't know, a little, little unusual, but uh, there are three or four songs on here that are just earworms. Absolutely love it. All right, number 24, someone I have seen in concert twice, who is an American treasure who is really underappreciated. A lot of people don't know her, Betty LeVette. Uh, if you want to see something of hers on YouTube, I have two recommendations. One is uh, she was at the Kennedy Center Honors for The Who, 
And you ought to see Pete Townsend and Roger Daltrey watch her sing Love Rain Army. Um, Pete tears up and she just really nails it. And then also she did a performance for Paste and her performance of Bob Dylan's Things Have Changed is great. But she's a R&B singer from the 60s who was a minor star. She had one or two hits and never had a big career and then had a late career renaissance in her 60s. And she does covers, almost exclusively covers. And this album, The Scene of the Crime, is exactly that. She co-wrote one song on it. And the rest of the songs are by um, George Jones and Willie Nelson, two country artists, Ray Charles, Don Henley, John Hyatt, Elton John. Just She just, whatever song she likes, apparently the story is that she's, she's married to a, uh, a white man who has different tastes than she does and she hears music that he plays and she says oh i like that song and that's kind of how she chooses what to record is based on her husband's uh collection and his taste this is produced by patterson hood of the uh of drive by truckers fame and yeah great great album we're still at three and a half stars i think if i have any knock on this album she occasionally over emotes so she'll get a little shrieky once in a while. Uh, but she is a fantastic singer. Like I say, I've seen her twice in concert. I'm a big fan. And if you don't know Betty Levette, check her out. Um, the Scene of the Crime, very good album. All right. Number 23 is a country western album. Uh, but not your typical country western. Speaking of uh, Patterson Hood and Drive By Truckers, uh, they did a show on Austin City Limits. And uh, Austin City Limits at that time would usually have two acts, each doing half an hour. And the artist they chose to open for him was Ryan Bingham. And I had never heard of him before. He's from Texas. And I really liked his set, and I've been a fan of his ever since. This is his album called Mescalito, and it's called, he does a couple songs in uh, Spanish on here, but most of the songs are in English. And this is great. I, you know, the way I like my country music is I, I don't like the typical Nashville sound or anything that's right down the middle of the bell curve, anything that's just kind of produced for the radio. But if there's a scene somewhere else, whether it be Bakersfield, California, or um, Charlotte, North Carolina, or Austin, Texas, you know, I like that kind of thing. And Ryan Bingham, man, he's got this really gravelly voice. So he is uh, a real cowboy. He was uh, a bull rider in the rodeo, and he used to sleep in the back of his pickup truck, and supposedly too many nights sleeping in the back of his pickup truck affected his voice. And he has this very husky, husky voice. Uh, but there is some wicked steel guitar on here. Mm, love it. And there's a bonus track on here that I love. Um, it's recorded outdoors, you can tell. And then a train goes by and uh, you can hear some crickets in a train. And before he starts the song, he says, Ah, there's always got to be a fucking train. And then he launches into the song on just his guitar. And it's a, it's a wonderful track, about five minutes long. And you can hear the train um, in the distance through most of the song. And I think it's just one of those things where you just had to capture lightning in a bottle. But he is, uh, he's fantastic. And he became, uh, he became much better known when he uh, did a, couple tracks for the movie crazy heart do you remember that movie with jeff bridges he penned a couple of the tracks that jeff bridges sang in that movie and i think he also had a small role in it so a lot of people um kind of caught on to the ryan bingham train here when he was in that movie uh but yeah great stuff i i don't know you just the, the the slide guitar on there i don't know it's just it's it's got some rock and roll flavor to it and it's really good i highly recommend it 
Um, a high three and a half stars for that album. And now we're getting into four star territory. Uh, number 22 is a, another veteran, and that would be Robert Wyatt, who was in a band called The Soft Machine in the 60s. And then uh, he fell off a balcony and was uh, paralyzed and confined to a wheelchair. So he was a drummer, and he couldn't drum after he fell out of the balcony. So he completely changed his career. He launched the solo career, became a keyboard player and songwriter. He also does uh, two or three songs in Spanish as well, even though he's English. And great album. And it's the last album he's done. He hasn't done an album since 2007. He's still alive. And uh, this was uh, Album of the Year from Wire Magazine. Yeah. Yeah, really something. So um, that's a surprise. It's got some guest musicians on it. Brian Eno, Phil Manzanera, Paul Weller. He's got a really high-pitched voice, very uh, esoteric. And I love Robert Wyatt. Uh, I, I like almost every album he's ever put out. And uh, this this is this is um, eighty six on Metacritic. So there you go. And then coming in at number twenty one is a rap album. I've got a couple rap albums on here, and you might say, "Oh, he put on Kanye West's Graduation." Sorry, I like that album. I like Graduation quite a bit, but it didn't make my list. Um, instead, I have. Aesop Rock, and he is, um, I don't know if you're familiar with him, but this album, None Shall Pass, this is how I like my rap, is really smart stuff. He's a great lyricist, love his cadence. Uh, there is some sameness on the album. He kind of has the same cadence the whole way through, but he uses different producers, Blockhead, LP, Rob Sonic, and then he produces some of the tracks, so you get some sonic variety and killer rap. I love it, and I own this album. So, yeah, I should have pulled these out and shown them to you. Uh, but None Shall Pass by Aesop Rock. Uh, speaking of my stepson, I played him Aesop Rock, and he fell in love with him and thanked me years later for turning me on to him. So... He is, uh, and I don't know how I found out about him. I don't remember. Um, I have no memory of that. So let's recap this. Um, let's talk about what All Music liked. Um, All Music, their favorite albums were Betty LeVette and Deerhoof and Ian Hunter. Yeah, does that surprise you? Betty LeVette, Scene of the Crime. Deerhoof, Friend Opportunity, and Ian Hunter, Shrunken Heads. They all gave those four and a half stars. The highest on Pitchfork was um, the highest rated album on here was the Deerhoof, 8.9. Uh, they also liked Boxer by The National at 8.6. And the I'm Not There soundtrack at uh, 8.0 so those were the three albums oh and they also um they did like the saint vincent though i meant that was an honorable mention on metacritic uh the highest rated albums on here are comic opera by robert wyatt and boxer by the national those both scoring 86 um and nothing really close to that everything else in the high 70s uh pretty much rate your music the highest rated albums on here are boxer by the national that's a top 100 album on rate your music and then in the second tier they like the mavis staples believe it or not the one that was my um uh, honorable mention, and then they also really liked the Ryan Bingham. Uh, that rated, uh, that was 162. I include compilations when I run the program. 
So those are the three top albums on Rate Your Music. So yeah, interesting. And then coming in at number 200 was the Aesop Rock. So uh, yeah, some pretty, um, most of these albums were critically appreciated. Um, in my honorable mention category, I I said that a lot of people hated the Paul McCartney. And so that would have been the weakest one. Pitchfork didn't like that at all. But I defend that Paul McCartney. I think it's, he's got two or three good albums in the last uh, 25 years. So, well, that's it. Let's wrap it up. I will give you a link to my Spotify playlist where you can check out these songs and also um, a spreadsheet at the end of this video. Thanks for hanging on if you're still here. And hit that like or subscribe button if you like what I'm doing, a senior reacting to the new music and defending the 21st century. As we say here in Bonita, Mexico, buen dia.